I'm Roy Lee Lindsay with the North Carolina Pork Council, and I want everyone to remember, bacon makes everything better. Hey folks, David Glenn here from the North Carolina Sports Network coming at you from the ACC kickoff. Our coverage, as always, pro provided by the North Carolina Pork Council. Joining us now is the Virginia Tech Hokies head coach, Brent Pry. He is the son of a college football coach. He is entering his third season with the Hokies, and he is coming off a 7-6 and six campaign that included a bowl victory. His Hokies are a popular dark horse pick to finish really high in the ACC standings this year. Coach Pry, welcome to the David Glenn Show. How are you? Appreciate you having me. Uh, any Anytime you get a full day to talk about our Hokies is a good day. Amen to that. There's some heavier questions I'm going to get to, but let me start you with something fun. I'm curious. Your last home game at Lane Stadium was last November. How many times since November have you gone out of your way to either play the Enter Sandman Metallica song or maybe it just popped up in your life without you pushing the button. Now let me tell you this. In the recruiting process, we played an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of the best entrances, if not the best, in all of college football. And uh, so we certainly emphasize it and, and highlight it and showcase it when we have recruits and families on campus. And, uh, you know, it's always, it still gets the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Me too. And, and I'm just a member of the media. It doesn't happen in press boxes very often, but it has when I've been to Lane Stadium. Uh, I mentioned, and my partner knows your dad. Yep. Uh, at what point did the son of a college football coach, and of course you were, I know, a star high school player in Virginia, a college football player as well. At what point in that journey did you kind of have that light bulb come on that I want to be a college football coach like my dad? First of all, I'd be careful throwing that word star around I heard as a you high school good, football man. player. <laughs> but I'll say this, you know, growing up around it and uh, just, you know, day to day seeing my dad, you know, build the relationships and have fun coaching and competing. And I, it, it was easy to, at an early on age, to, to figure out that's what I wanted to do. You know, I don't know if I could verbalize it as early as I just knew that, you know, that's, that's in me. Obviously, Dad was uh, and is my greatest influence in the coach that I am. And, uh, you know, I'm very thankful for the experiences that, that he helped me see. Um, the passion he has and had for the game, um, I wanted that. I wanted to feel that strongly about something. And uh, you know, So I'm very fortunate to have him as a role model and as my pops. Virginia Tech coach Brent Pry is our guest here on the North Carolina Sports Network. I mentioned the optimism on the outside. You as coaches try to have your players have tunnel vision, block out the noise, yeah. et cetera. But I imagine optimism from the outside could be channeled in a positive way. How have you managed what is clearly higher expectations in year three than you had, say, the day you arrived in Blacksburg? Well, first of all, the accomplishments, you know, I don't want to ignore those. You know, there's, there's expectations because of the some of the things that that we were able to achieve as a team and so we do talk about those but in the same breath we talk about it has no real bearing on the team that we can be when we go to Nashville you know that's that's more about the winter the spring the summer the camp we need to have all the things that we need to the areas need to improve and the depth that needs developed to be that team so it's a little bit noise and we actually did a, a, a team meeting where we ghost busted positive articles. Hmm. We ghost busted negative articles. Hmm. In the end, we have a great experience. We were one in three, and the noise was bad. And we learned to ignore it, that it had no bearing on the team that we knew we could be, the team that we had. And uh, so this is, you know, similar dialogue. But also, I'm, you know, the guys are proud, and they should be. And there's some confidence that came from that. And then lastly... You know, I think that uh, for us, the expectation should be that at Virginia Tech. That's why I returned. I understand those expectations. I want those for our program. I want young men to want to come to Virginia Tech because of those expectations. And when Coach says he returned, he was a grad assistant a long time ago in Blacksburg. That's what he's referring to there. 
If you are anywhere near Wilmington, North Carolina, and looking for a little live music, a cold beer, a tangy slushy, a fun crowd, or just a taste of the good life at the beach, Jimmy's Bar in Wrightsville Beach is the place for you. Located on North Lumina Avenue, just one block from the sand and waves of the Atlantic Ocean, Jimmy's features a full bar with nightly beer and drink specials, and it hosts musical performers almost every day of the year. One more fun fact, Jimmy's annual children's bike drive, which started in 2017, now distributes more than 1,000 bicycles and helmets per year to young people in the Wilmington area and beyond. Jimmy's Bar, your home away from home on Lumina Avenue in Wrightsville Beach. I've started a couple businesses in my life, and I remember at the very beginning, as if we were talking to you two years ago, right? Yeah. It felt like I never got more than a handful of the things on my checklist done because everything was brand new. How long would the list be of things that you feel better about, more comfortable with, more structured or organized with right now entering year three compared to what must have been a little bit of an overwhelming feeling as a first-time head coach two years ago? Yeah, there was no handbook on NIL and the transfer report. <laughs> right. As much as I learned from my dad and James Franklin and Jeff Munkin and Coach Beamer and Bud, I mean, there was no handbook for that. So it was a lot. But, uh, you know, we always hang our hat on doing things the right way, being genuine, being transparent, embracing hard conversations. That's how we're building this program. You know, we've, we've gotten to a place where I feel pretty good about the culture in our locker room, you know, with our staff, with our players, and, you know, and that's very important, I think, to do this the way that um, is necessary for me and for Virginia Tech. That had to be established, and we've done that. So that's a big one that, uh, you know, you never stop working on your culture, but we've gotten it to a good place. You have an exciting quarterback named Kyron Drones. In the offseason, from afar, we read that there was tampering. We read that he was contemplating the portal. From the perspective of a head coach in a name image likeness era, it's not like you're allowed to reach in your back pocket and say, hey, Kyron, if this other school is offering you this, uh, I guess you got to lean on Virginia Tech associated name image likeness programs. Just give us a sense of how that works in 2024, because your job in part depends on keeping a quarterback that you've developed into a really exciting player. Yeah, I think with Kyron and, and with all the guys we were able to retain, it's, it's a combination of being competitive enough in the, in the name, image, and likeness space, but more importantly to me, that they like it at Virginia Tech, that they want to be there. They're bought in, they trust the process, they're happy. The last question I ask each and every one of them when I meet with all the players, one-on-one -on -one basis at the end of the spring, is do you like it here? And to a man, there was only four or five that didn't say, coach, I love it here. So, and again, there's a lot that goes into that experience. It's Virginia Tech, it's our program, it's our people, it's our staff, it's resources, it's, it's name, image, and likeness. There's a lot of things. But I know this, Kyron, maybe most of all, but there's a number of players in our football team that could have gone elsewhere and made more money, and that's not what it was about. You're going to have to keep these short because they're pulling you to your next stop on the uh, car wash, as we call it. But I shared with you earlier, Coach Beamer became a good friend of the David Glenn Show over about th three decades. We played golf together. I consider him kind of a professional friend. How would you describe his relationship either with you specifically or Hokies football more generally here in 2024? Yeah, first of all, utmost respect for Coach. I mean, I remember just having so much respect. I was intimidated to walk in his office, you know, as a young coach. I just wanted to make him proud and do right and help us any way we could. And that really hasn't changed. When I see him, that's what comes to mind. I want this program to return to greatness, you know, that he worked so hard to build. Um, you know, I probably see him a couple times a week. He still comes to the building and he walks with John Boleyn. And I saw him yesterday, he talked about coming down here to this. And you know, he's very supportive. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a hokey at heart, so this program means a ton to him. And, um, you know, we're fortunate that, uh, you know, he's with us and that uh, we do get to see him. Recruits get excited and their families, yeah. and, you know, it's just awesome having him around. Real quick, they're going to throw tomatoes at me. We cover the whole state of North Carolina. You have a guy named Basil Tootin. <laughs> How do you know that a superstar at North Carolina A&T in your evaluation process 
is going to transition so smoothly. He's an all ACC player for you guys uh, last year and obviously a big part of what's waiting you this fall. Yeah, to me, when you look at, at you know an FCS level player, he ought to be the most dominant player on the field each and every week. It's, it's very clear. Um, and that was the case for Bayshaw. You know, he was special at that level. And then when you look at the fit in your offense and everything that you want that tailback to be, he checked all those boxes. His name is Brent Pry. Coach, thanks for letting us get to know you a little bit better here at the David Glenn Show. We look forward to more visits. Appreciate it. Absolutely, David. Good to see you.